Welcome to Wildspire. You get to be a fly on the wall for my intimate conversations with entrepreneurs who are changing the world. I'm your host, Stephanie Benedetto, coach, storyteller, and unmarketer at The Awakened Business, helping coaches and change-making entrepreneurs unleash their inspired message and share it with playful unmarketing. I'll ask curious questions and explore uncharted waters with my guests today. Anything can happen when we step into the unknown of infinite creativity, and that's where we're going to play. My guest today is Kate Cherisello, who is a beacon of light and positivity on her own podcast. And of course, I invited her over to my podcast so she could do the same and you would have a chance to meet her. Let me tell you a little bit about Kate. Kate is a New York City-based performer, host, and certified fitness professional. She's the creator and host of the weekly podcast, Be the Good with Kate, where guests share their journey to finding their passion and helping others along the way. Be the Good with Kate inspires each week with guests from across the globe, including... In the past, a Broadway music director, ex convict, hospital clown, nonprofit leaders, people who've lost those closest to them, people who have found their calling in their 60s, and even Kate's kindergarten teacher. As a performer, Kate has toured with the USO show troupe, Jersey Boys, and Broadway Tonight, and performed in numerous productions across the country. She has appeared in commercials, television shows, and films. By incorporating manageable and impactful changes each day, Kate inspires others to live their healthiest lives. She trains and coaches in person and virtually and brings health and wellness expertise to business and corporate settings. And now she's bringing it to us. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Kate Cherisello. Hi, Kate. Welcome to the Wildspire podcast. I'm so happy to have you here today. Oh, it's so good to be here, Stephanie. You're just always such a breath of fresh air, as they say. So thanks for having me. Oh, I'm glad they're saying that about me. It's good to know. (laughs) (laughs) So, Kate, I was first a guest on your podcast, and I just love the name of it, Be the Good. And I love your story behind creating it. So, Actually, would you share just briefly, like, tell me what it was that inspired you to start that podcast? Sure. Thanks. You know, it was during the height of the pandemic. I'm an actor and a host, and I love that world, and everything stopped. And I thought, you know, one, I need to keep these, you know, so to speak, muscles active of working on camera and all of that. But then more than that was we were surrounded by all of this negative news, and just everything was heavy. And yes, we needed to know about what was going on. We needed to be informed, but we also needed levity in there. And we needed to be reminded that despite all of the negative, there is still positive around us. And so I was inspired to just start sharing some of the good news stories I found. And I put together, you know, a little like six minute videos about that and then skip ahead. I said, well, I need to do something more with this, something that's forcing me out of my comfort zone too, to get on camera and to create something. So I reached out to a couple of people who I knew are doing good in this world. One was, you know, a founder of a nonprofit, you know, things like that. And once I sent that email, it was like, well, I'm in, you know, if these people say, yes, I have to do it now. I can't just keep planning this show that I have in my head. And I love interviewing people. I love hearing their stories. Both those people said yes. And then there we go. We had our first two episodes. And from there, it just kept going. And pretty soon I had people reaching out to me to be on the show because there's so many people who are doing good in so many different ways. You know, some sure have founded organizations, but other people are your, as some may say, just everyday people who are trying in different ways to just make the world better around them. Mm, That's beautiful. I love that. I love that as a personal project and I love that you've shared it with the world. And that's why I was, I was drawn to you. It had an energy about it that I felt like, yes, I want to contribute and be a part of it. So what, what Kate in this journey, because I imagine this has been a journey, you know, you said you had to move through your comfort zone, also grow your comfort zone through it. Like, what have you learned about, what have you seen about being the good in the world 
Maybe that surprised you. Mm-hmm. You know, two things come to mind right away. One is more in the technical logistical and one is more in the big picture. And I think the first would be that we, thanks to technology, especially now, it is truly easy to give people a spotlight and it is way too easy to give the negative a spotlight. You think about the news and quote unquote, what sells, right? You get those, those headlines that are very scandalous and all of that. And it's also though, we have to remember it's easy to shine a light on the good and me turning on a camera and talking to someone about what they were doing scared me because I, I like to be told, here's the project now make it happen. Or, you know, I like to talk to people out in life, but to actually have some sort of formal creation that I was responsible for, that was a scary part. But really once you click record on the camera, it's like, Oh, this is happening. And it was actually so easy to do. I didn't need crazy lights. I didn't need, you know, a 10 person crew. And so, I mean, I can go on and on about that, but I think there's, there's that aspect of it is easy to shine the light on the good news. Even if it's sharing an Instagram story from something, you know, that reminder. And then for more, the big picture from interviewing, I'm now at um, episode I think 114 in be the good with Kate and something that really has stood out every time about being the good in our world is that starting with a small step, a lot of times we hear, oh, I have to make a difference. And we think, okay, well, what, what board can I join? And what, you know, 10 week, six hour a day project, or I'm exaggerating, but you know, project can I be a part of? And almost all of these people I've talked to have done something that was one small step or something that looked like it was going to turn out really bad and ended up being the best thing that happened to them. You know, that sort of thing. Um, You know, whether it was someone lost a job that they thought they were going to be set in for life. And that was the impetus to go out and do something that they actually had a true passion for, whereas that job was just what had the paycheck and the fancy title. Or um, there's one woman named Genevieve who started uh, she in, she was in corporate. This is going a while back now. Um, and she started reading to kids at an emergency shelter one day a week for an hour. And she realized, oh my gosh, this there's such a need here. These poor children, they come to this emergency shelter and they don't have even clothes with them most of the time. They just have themselves and they're little kids. They're terrified. You know, they're ripped, ripped out of their homes and So she said, I love reading to them and I see how much pleasure that gives them, but I can do more. She started getting pajamas for these kids. And then she became, that became her whole job was creating this organization that brought in pajamas and reading to these kids in emergency shelters. So it really is that there are opportunities all around us and it doesn't have to be, oh my gosh, I have to do this giant thing. It can be one hour a month. It can be something that you post every day online. It can be calling someone that you know is lonely and seeing how they're doing. There are so many ways that we can make the world a better place. Mm. That's really cool. I actually had a conversation with Genevieve a couple of years ago. I think it was oh, yeah. on the on the podcast. No yes, way. yes. I rec- as soon as you said Genevieve, I'm like, oh, I know the, ah. the pajama thing, and yeah, oh, yeah. what a beautiful story. That's I, wild. That of all the people that came to mind, she is one that you've talked yep, to. Yep. <laughs> and it's it is fascinating. I love that what you're bringing is start here, start in this moment. And honestly, I think that the, the most powerful thing that we can do to be the good is to be ourselves right mm, here. Yes. Our true selves, not our thoughts about ourselves. You know, I can go crazy with judgment about myself and oh, thinking and self-conscious. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the way you feel when you feel at your best. That's you. Mm. That's me. Yes. Like that. From that place, it occurs to us to do things for others without even trying. It's just what happens. We notice. Because now I'm not so obsessed with my own self-thinking that I'm actually paying attention to the people around me. 
to the things around me. I, I noticed um, I had my head in the sand for a really long time. Actually, maybe you could speak to this. So I see I, the people in my world kind of fall into different places on this. All of them really want to make a difference in some way. I, I mean, I these this is my community. They care. So on the one hand, they they get really stressed out because they're looking at the news, they're thinking about politics, they're worried about what's happening. They want to make a difference, but it, and they're called to in some way, and it becomes, it gets heavy. It feels like pressure. And then sometimes on the other hand, this is where I was for a long time. I was kind of putting my head in the sand a little bit. I didn't want to look. I wouldn't watch the news. It was too much for me. And now I see there was wisdom in it because I was scared. Mm. And I had enough anxiety going on in my life already that to look further was more than I could do at that time. And it wasn't until I started to feel safe in myself that my eyes opened and I was no longer afraid to look. So if someone is maybe somewhere either of those ends of the spectrum, like, what have you seen that can help us to navigate that, to actually make a difference without making it hard on ourselves? I love how you said safe in myself. That was such a, that, that really stuck in my head right in that moment, because it's such a great way to talk about a lot of things, but especially the idea of you said safe in yourself, then you could see the terrible the news and whatnot that was going on but that was a really good way to put it because it is right a lot of we all have fears and we all have things that make us give us anxiety and the news does catapult that so much more but the more that we are established in our foundation and what rings true to us the better we are able to face all of that so I love that you said that and how you worded that and I think you know with with regards to being the good when we are surrounded by all of this is the reminder that we're not going to be able to do everything all at once, you know, and because there, there are so many problems and I know, like I just moved to a new community in recent months. And so I've been, you know, I want to get involved in a nonprofit and figure that out. And I know that I'm trying to figure like, okay, wait, where would my time be best spent? Because there are so many issues everywhere. If we go worldwide, if we go countrywide, if we go statewide, if we go my own town, you know, there, there are going to be so many issues. So it's like, do you help the environment? Do you help the kids? Do you help the sick? Do you help the political things? It's just like, what do you do? And it's completely overwhelming at times. So I think the a big aspect is we won't be able to do any everything. And once we accept that we can't change every single thing, I know for me that's helpful because then I don't feel like every time I hear something that's not going well or someone that's getting hurt, I can't help every single thing, but I can do something. And maybe I can even do a little bit of a lot of things. And both are great, right? You can choose the little bit of a lot of things route and make little steps forward in a lot of ways, or you can tackle one subject that we're really passionate about and see where it grows. And maybe you'll be able to make an even bigger impact, but we can all do something. And if all of that still feels overwhelming, I also love the reminder of if nothing else, we can help one person. You know, do you know someone, like I said before, who's a low, who's lonely? Do you know someone who is sick or just went through something really terrible? Maybe they just need a phone call, you know, and I'm sure you experience this so much with people as well. It's just the power of talking to someone. I remember talking to you about the community that you found in Madeira and all of that as well. And it really is amazing, right? How, how much of an impact you can have just by listening to someone. Yeah. And just this morning, I had a friend who is going through a tough time and I listened to her for probably over an hour, she just told wow. me about what's been going on because there was quite the drama story. And at the end, I said to her, so, you know, how can I support you? Like, what would mm -hmm. really help you right now? And she said, really, just listen. Just listening is, is so helpful. 
And it feels like nothing. It is not nothing to really listen to someone, to really be a space where they can express, they can hear themselves think. Like a lot of times just talking that through out loud, we can we can hear things, we can we can hear our own bullshit, and then we can hear the wisdom when it comes. Oh, what about that? There's space. And having someone listen opens that up. Yeah, that's a that's a big deal, actually. And it's unfortunately rare for a lot of people. I would say mm-hmm. it's not rare for me. I'm blessed. I I have really good listeners in my life. Some of them I pay to listen to me yeah. and others are just like really good friends. And I do a lot of listening and listening to someone else is good for me because yeah. I quiet down. Yes. So it's kind of like the win for everyone. I love that. It is. It is. And there's so many studies, you know, if you really want to get into the science of it too, that back all of this from, as you said, from both you're the listener or you're the person talking in this instance, that person, they need to feel that they're not alone. You know, loneliness is such an epidemic in our world. And just knowing that someone cares is huge. And then for the listener, I mean, the, the, endorphins that come when you are interacting with another human. And I love the studies too, that talk about even the engagement at like a grocery store. If you comment about something that you're seeing, or, you know, you're out on taking a walk and there's a cute little kid and you talk to the parent for a second, you know, those short interactions also prove to help us so much. So never discounting all of those interactions we could have. Mm. This brings to mind something that expands our idea of what it is to make a difference just by noticing the difference that's already happening. Mm. Like the the goodness, the things we're grateful for around us already. Now, just to take a little bit of time to bring my attention there immediately, there's, there's always beauty when I look for it. There's always kindness when I look for it. You know, I I might have to look a little bit if I'm in a low mood. I might have to stay there for a minute, but there's something there. There is. Like the minute it occurs to me to look, there it is. There's something to be found. Yeah. I love that you too, that you also said the minute it occurs to you to look, because when we get into our little spirals, right, of the negative thoughts and we're down in a rut, it's so easy to forget to even try to see that there's something more. Yeah. And granted, it's not like we can say, oh, I shouldn't be upset because there's so much good around. No, no, no. We have to, we have to be able to feel, we have to be able to feel and work through the issues, but also to not live in that hole to, to get up and see what's above the hole. There's flowers around us, you know, in, in addition to the rain. Yeah. There was a there was another woman who came on my podcast. I'll have to link to both of these here because I'm mentioning yeah. them. Who was fed up with the negative news. And so she she took it out of her life completely and started a blog to talk about the good things that people were doing and positive news and and it completely shifted her view of the world. It's kind of like where we put our attention is what we experience and where we tend to keep to put our attention. So there's a difference between this is the this is the tricky part, because I know that people in my community really care. They don't want to be like I was for so long, avoidant or in denial. They don't want that, but they also really want to feel good, Mm -hmm. you know. So uh, I think that we can by feeling good, we will put that out in the world naturally. Mm -hmm. You know, if we force ourselves to watch something that feels horrible in the moment. I don't think that's really going to help us put good things out there. I mean, it might motivate us to push through something, Mm -hmm. but feeling bad doesn't tend to make my words and actions better, not long-term. They're tense and tight. My experience is certainly not enjoyable. On the other hand, enjoying myself, I enjoy myself. When I started to notice this, Kate, the difference for me, when I started to feel safe, I realized like, oh, I found home in myself. I started to notice animals 
around me. Like I was rescuing animals. It was a period of time when there were bats. I was in Florida and there were bats that were grounded. And apparently bats have a hard time getting off the ground. They have to climb up. So you can actually help a bat with gloves, right? You need to be careful, but you can help a bat by putting on gloves and putting it on a tree because then it can swoop down and fly. Or there were lizards that would get trapped in, um, they would get trapped in houses and in this gym that I would go to and there'd be a lizard trapped in it and like skin and bones emaciated because it's been like, oh, I'll help you little lizard. And that seems so trivial, but it's like the parable of the, of the child on the beach who's there's all these starfish washed up on the on the shore right and the child's just one at a time throwing the starfish back back in the water and an adult comes along and like what are you doing you're never going to be able to save all these starfish you know how does it matter like well it matters to this starfish you know and like it matters to this lizard and it matters to this yeah. person and this dog and yeah. it matters to me it, the fact you brought up the starfish story, my eighth grade classroom had that on the wall. Mm -hmm. And I have loved that ever since. I've posted about it over the years. I love that you brought that up because that is a great reminder of the power of that one person. Um, and you know, the you were mentioning just how taking in all the negativity isn't helping you. And I think of that too, with, we're in such an ex, of an explosive media um, age, I guess, if you will. And that also I think contributes a lot. You know, we're not just reading black and white facts about anything. It's always very opinion driven. And if it's not opinion driven, it's just, there's an anger to so much mm. and there's just too much of that. And I think that's also part of it, right? Sometimes we see a, a, maybe a good news segment online and it's it's lovely, but it's short. And then something comes on that's negative and that's where it gets very like the music intensifies and this and that. And, you know, and it really, it's like our whole, our blood pressure goes up, but just to, to circle back to, how you said it's just not helping you. I think that's a good reminder for us all. Of like, is it helping our life, our lives to be submerging ourselves by choice into what we watch on TV or what we read online? And I keep going back to like TV and media because that's what we seem to be so surrounded by. But also then in the people that we surround us by, who are we happiest when we are around? Who do we feel good when we leave? versus who we feel like spent, who revives us versus who pulls us down. And that I always find is a great reminder too, especially when life is busy and you're trying to figure out who, who to get together with, who to see, who to interact with, that reminder of like, well, who's going to lift me up and or who I have the power to lift up where, where there's that mutual back and forth of where we're lifting up, not pushing down, you know? Yeah. It seems there are so many ways that we can and do make a difference every day that we can pick the things that are actually enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I like to think, I ask the question sometimes, like what's mine to do? What mm -hmm. am I feeling drawn towards? There are so many things, so many beautiful causes what's moving through me? Like, what's my part? What's my little part? And I think it, it gets shown to me, you know, without even really trying, I've started to get involved in a local community for me here where I am in Portugal. Um, and it's a community of remote workers. And somehow I've found, I was introduced to this woman who's like her, the values and the things she wants to do in the community starts contributing to the local community and being, making a positive difference, not just staying like a little circle of expats and digital nomads and, you know, like actually interacting and creating and benefiting the communities that we live in. It's, it's just what I was looking for. And so I'm listening, I'm hanging out because I don't know how I can help just yet, but I know that when I listen, something occurs to me, just like life will use me based on who I am. 
and what I enjoy and what's natural for me. And I think that's that's something we can relax into, if that makes sense. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. You keep showing up because you know that something will, it will, uh, what am I trying to say? Yeah, it, it will move into whatever it's supposed to be. That's great. And that's something I definitely see, you know, as I talk to all my guests too, with Be the Good with Kate, is that there are so many who didn't realize they were going to make an impact. And there, heck, there have been guests that I've gone into the interview being like, I know that this person is going to be a good guest, but I can't see exactly how I'm going to tie the mission in as well as I think I could with another guest. And by the end of the episode, I'm going, oh my gosh, it's still, they all ring true. Like they all have these you know, from someone from who I'm thinking about this one man who worked in prisons with conflict mediation to like someone who works in Japan for the USO to, you know, Genevieve with pajamas. And they all have these same base principles of listening to themselves, showing up, keeping their passions and the idea that they know they want to help others. And it all comes together no matter what that path along the way, it really all does if you keep listening to that. Mm -hmm. So how is that unfolding for you right now, Kate? You said something about a nonprofit or like what's moving in you as far Mm -hmm. as the, what you feel wanting to come forth? I think that two things that really keep coming back recently is one, that power of the people around me Um, the power I have with people around me of remembering that I can make an impact on all these people. Uh, I spent a lot of years of being pulled in so many directions. I didn't get those really deep moments with people as much as I'm now looking back going, oh my gosh, that's where it all, that's where it all is. You know, it's all with the people that you love. And so I'm just taking advantage every moment I can to get family members together, to go see a friend, to call someone on the phone. And even if that sounds so simple or, you know, or even recreational, I find so much value in that. And so that's one. And then the other thing is would be the good with Kate is, you know, having a baby and going through a move, there's been so much going on, but trying to make sure, no, this is something that I can do to make a difference And whether one person hears the story or a couple hundred people hear the story or anything in between, the more I can get these people's stories out there, the more impact I can have because I'm getting their stories out, but the more impact these people who are trying to do good, you know, you are one of them. You are my guest too, like that, that your words can get out there and it's so needed. I love that. So if people would like to, experience more of these guests and what people are doing to be the good and learn more about you, where's the best place for them to go? I think the easiest would be my website, katesharicello.com, just my name.com. And you'll see a link for Be the Good with Kate on there. And on any podcast platform, it's under Be the Good with Kate. Beautiful. And I will link to that in the description and on the blog so people can find it easily. Thank you, Stephanie. This is such a treat. Yeah. Thanks so much, Kate. So great to see you again. Thank you. I love what you're doing. Keep it up. Thanks so much for joining me for today's Wildspire conversation. If you'd like to receive a weekly Wildspire email from me filled with inspiring stories, unmarketing experiments, tips for playing your way to impact and income without the hustle and hype, insights from my spiritual business journey, and more, go to theawakenedbusiness.com forward slash Wildspire. Until next time, may you know yourself as the gorgeous wild creation you are.